Hey guys, so this is going to be a Roy uh, things to know video uh, covering some introductory or beginner type things to know about uh, optimizing Roy or uh, playing him a little better, little things that you can do. Um, there will be an intermediate and an advanced version of this as well. Um, but first I'm just going to cover some kind of more common and basic things and then we'll go up uh, based on the like difficulty and nicheness and that type of thing. So to start, if you get a jab lock on the ground using side B, you don't have to punish immediately after the jab lock with like jab or something that might tower spot or might not be what you want. Um, you can tech chase it, right? And so this is kind of obvious, maybe, but um, this is a pretty strong option, especially because if you start a side B, people will usually roll behind you to start unless they are like really used to the setup or are good enough to not panic. Um, so a very easy punish that you can do is doing a job lock, dashing back, and then smashing to cover them holding in. And the, they hold in because uh, they're trying to DI the side B, thinking you're going to hit them with side B. Um, this is a pretty basic setup. Uh, it's pretty common. People have been using it since like day two, probably. Um, but I think it's still pretty useful. Two, uh, down tilt tech case extensions. This is also pretty rudimentary. If you get a down tilt, you can down tilt them again, uh, especially if they tech in place. Uh, it's pretty easy. And um, from there, just F smash or whatever their uh, next tech option. Um, this just pushes them a little bit closer to the ledge so that you can get the stock. Uh, I think some people maybe rush it and maybe go for an immediate jab or something that might uh, not get them as much as they could. Uh, so pretty basic. But uh, definitely an option. So three, when you get a near one or a landing sour up there or such, opponents are much more likely to hold in to DI uh, the jab, which means that you almost always want to full hop the jab bear. Um, likewise, if you get a jab and they aren't expecting it, and you think they aren't expecting it, probably expect no DI. If you think they're a good player and they're expecting it, expect DI out usually, um, because DI out is the hardest to cover. Um, and so that's just a very basic, instead of having to like try and react to every DI evenly, um, you should be able to uh, guess which DI they're most likely to do, uh, at least to some extent. Four, jab side B. So obviously jab side B is, I think, a pretty well-known combo now. Um, just a couple of things to note about it is if you get a jab and you don't feel like you can hit all the hits of the side B, uh, you can always just wait, uh, especially after like the second hit, and try and bait out an air dodge and punish that with the no smash or something. Um, two is uh, if you feel like you might whiff, you can also just finish. Uh, mess it up there. You can also just finish with the up angle and make sure they don't fall out of it. One thing that can be kind of bad is if they, because if your opponent isn't mashing and you whiff a side B, side B has a lot of lag. They can end up punishing you from above for attempting the jab side B. So if you feel like your execution is off or they SDI'd up or something, it can be good to just finish the jab side B and make sure that you aren't punished for it. Uh, finish the jab side B by doing up, upwards angle side B, I mean. Five, so this one's pretty basic and also just a general combo concept. Um, but you can uh, up air and then delay the second up air uh, to basically maintain more frame advantage and then do a third up air. If you have more up airs, you can also use platforms to extend it. This is a pretty useful thing, especially against characters that you think you can juggle well. Um, but I see that some people are just like combo and they're like, oh, I go for an up air and I'm just going to go for the immediate super easy follow up that maybe doesn't keep your advantage state quite as long or doesn't get quite as much damage. Um, so there's something to keep in mind for uh, people that are still learning the character. 
So next is dare spiking. Um, for dare spiking, there are a couple ways to do it. One is you can uh, just do it in place like this. You can technically full hop, short hop, um, and just try and hit below the ledge. Um, you can technically do it the other way as well. Just be careful that if you, uh, if you fall down ledge like that and you're fast flying, you can easily end up losing a stock for it. Um, uh, the other way is to T-Spike, which there are a couple ways to do it. The way that I just showed it is using uh, using the A button. Um, I find using the A button a little bit clunky, like I can kind of do it sometimes, but to get good momentum with it is a little bit hard, uh, especially if I'm, my hands are tired like they are now because I'm recording and labbing for a bit. Um, the way that I prefer to do it is to use the left stick and the uh, shoulder jump button to like jump backwards and then just add the dare right after so that I can space it um, up slightly below ledge um, or even more below ledge if I want. Uh, I can space it according to their recovery. Uh, so that's the way that I would have recommend do it. Um, but feel free to practice both because both can prove useful. Sometimes you want to just stay on ledge here and just go with this, especially if you have less time. You don't necessarily have the time to run off and, and, then, and then spike. Uh, so you might just want to do it in place here. Um, the benefit to uh, T-spiking and um, not uh, doing like that is you, you might mess up recovery and not make it back and you aren't in a position to ledge trap. So um, when you T-spike, you, you kind of want to, in my opinion, ensure that you get above the ledge first and uh, you know if it's a little bit, if the execution is a little bit not clean otherwise, um, like maybe you uh, cheese spike kind of high, okay, but at least I'm in position to ledge trap and I'm not going to be uh, edge guarded. Uh, I think that's probably the most important with that version of the spike. Uh, so hopefully that helps people uh, dare spike a bit, and I definitely recommend trying to do it versus characters that have uh, like lost a double jump or something and don't have uh, super great timing mix-ups for their recovery. Or even if you just have a read. For F throw tech chasing, so obviously down throw is a pretty good throw because you can get free damage off of it, but sometimes you can actually get more off of a uh, F throw, which can send some characters into a uh, tech chase scenario, uh, especially if they don't DI up, uh, especially if they're like a fast floor or that type of character. A lot of characters at most percents can jump out of it, but uh, one is that you can you know, always try and punish the jump. Um, two is that um, you know, they might not jump out of it because they aren't ready for it or they aren't aware or whatever. So F throw can still be a decent tech chasing option. Uh, one simple option is to uh, go for a dare tech chase. Um, that's kind of straightforward. A dare is actually a pretty good combo starter and it gets low to the ground. Um, you can uh, go for just running up and doing something um, like a side B um, if you think they're going to you know, miss the tech or tech in place. Um, but in general, uh, I think this is an option that uh, beginner players might like to use a little bit. So be sure to lab it out and uh, try and set people into uh, tech chases, uh, or at least get them to you know jump out of disadvantage and see if you can cover the next option uh, with that threat. Uh, this is also pretty straightforward, but uh, Blazer, the up B, uh, can actually hit through ledge if you uh, space it a certain way. Uh, so if you like run into the ledge, you can uh, kind of go through the stage, but you won't really get much of the hitbox above the stage. Um, if you go like that, you get more of the hitbox. And uh, you can also DP a B it to get some of the hitbox. Now the hitboxes can be a little misleading. The hitbox is like 
the not the not exactly the flame part of the sword, but more the actual like thick effect of the sword, like the um, it's hard to show it, but like the where the actual sword is, um, that like orangish line, and not necessarily all the uh, flames. So. That's what you're kind of aiming to poke through the ledge, and this can help you uh, recover against certain uh, ledge traps or other moves. Um, keep in mind, obviously, that with all uh, upbees, where you you know you might you end up poking your head above the ledge and get hit for it. Um, but against some uh, ledge traps um, or edge guard attempts, it can be useful, and it's something to keep in mind as an option. For the next topic, I'm going to talk about flare blade two framing. So flare blade can technically two frame. Um, it hits a little bit below ledge, kind of. Really, it hits like in line with ledge. Um, but characters will sometimes poke their head up, like right at about ledge height. So if you space flare blade properly, then you can hit people as they're grabbing the ledge. However, the spacing is not lenient, and it's not very big, and it doesn't work versus a lot of recoveries. Um, assuming that they don't, you know, mess up the recovery somehow or. Uh, come from some really weird angle or something like that. Uh, so some things to keep in mind, and I, one is that if you're flare blading and you aren't in the proper position already, there's like, there's no point in doing it. Like this is literally never going to two frame them. It's not anywhere close to the precise spacing that you need. Um, and so there's not, there's just not any point in throwing it out. Even if it looks like the effect might reach, that's not really how the flare blade Flare Blade 2 frame works. The Flare Blade 2 frame only really hits at, you see that like blue effect? I kind of like to measure it in the, like, if I if you draw like a line in the middle of the uh, the focal point of the blue effect, it's kind of at that center, right at the bottom, right at about ledge height. That's kind of the point where I draw um, roughly. You can also look at it from the sword. There's a point near the middle of the sword, I think a little bit closer to the hilt, um, where the, like, the bottom of the hitbox circle is. So you want to hit people with that, and if you don't, then it won't work. Um, the other thing is, like, let's say I hit ZSS here, and they choose to recover. Um, if they recover at this angle, my spacing is good enough to hit them here. Um, this is because ZSS's head lines up with where the flare blade hitbox is, but the head positioning in the frames of the two-frame window change based on how you recover it. So, like, on the flip side, if I, um, that's how I go here and I down tilt her instead. And if she chooses, I don't have trading mod pack, so bear with me here. Um, if I down tilt her, alright, come on ZSS, help me out. And Rose too strong. Um, if she's forced to recover from a lower angle, like here, she's not going to make herself vulnerable uh, in a way that allows me to two frame her. So basically, as soon as as soon as DSS is recovering, and as soon as she opts not to recover at the angle where I'm set up to two frame, I should just let go and set up a normal ledge trap because there's no point in trying to um, like basically cover her uh, low up base. Like this is going to be a low up base. This is not aimed to cover this. And at this low angle, a lot of characters can't even be too framed at these low recovery angles anyway. Um, it's just not worth it. You can look at it like right here. Um, it's like fairly well centered. I would actually, I think it should be a little bit to the left, but it doesn't hit, um, even though it's timed correctly. So my point is, if you are flailing and you set a position and you're trying to two frame, and they choose not to recover in a way that allows you to two frame them, or your two frame spacing is not correct, literally just let go. Don't hold it for no reason, and do another ledge trap. If you continue to hold it, the thing is two frame spacing and ledge trap spacing are different. So if you're spacing it to like try and two frame, but you're not, then what's going to happen? And you let go late, people may get up and attack into it, which if you're slow, could hit you. 
Or they'll be forced into a weird mix-up where they can jump past you. Um, and you will probably be scared of a get-up attack, so you might tap shield, but then you'll be late to react to other options. And it's just kind of a weird situation where you're not... You're like a little bit focused on the two frame, and you're not putting all of your effort into ledge trapping as well as you probably could. Um, so that's kind of why I don't recommend just charging flare blade for no reason. Um, and I do see a, a lot of people kind of go for this anyway, so that's why I wanted to talk about it a little bit. So the next thing I'd like to talk about and show is Roy's recovery. Um, Roy can actually recover pretty far horizontally if you get the right angle, and you space the upbeat accordingly so that he kind of snaps to ledge after reaching the peak, basically. Um, you can see that he it almost looks like he like teleports to the, to the ledge, honestly. Um, this is pretty important to know because there are situations where you're hit like pretty far deep and you need to hit this horizontal angle that lets you get like slightly above the ledge so that you can snap to it. Um, I've seen even like good Roy's not make it back when they could have because they didn't recover properly. Um, so I would recommend like practicing going off stage and just recovering from pretty far. Uh, if you need to, you can recover, like be, practice a be reverse recovery in case your back is turned to ledge for some reason. But you can always use side B to turn around. Um, but yeah, basically it's important to know uh, how you can space his recovery and how to recover well as Roy. For this next topic, I kind of hesitate to even talk about it, but um, I think it's maybe a little bit unintuitive because I think people, they, you know, hear about Roy's sweet spot and, you know, play him and they think, well, I have to be really close, I have to hold forward if I want to get the good, uh, the good damage of Roy's sword. That's like kind of true, but um, besides the obvious, sour spots are also good. Point um, one thing is that if a character is approaching you and you want to outspace them, you can outspace them with a retreating aerial. And okay, you won't have the momentum to combo, which is obviously not ideal. But there are some scenarios where that doesn't matter. Like a high percent, sometimes you just need to win neutral and. Maybe that's your best option at that time. Um, in some matchups, you might be safer to hold back a little bit and, and just deal a lot of like straight hits, or you can you know do a uh, retreating back air to cover some space. So basically, my point is uh, make sure that you're implementing retreating aerials into your neutral where it is uh, useful, and don't. Don't feel like you have to always jump forward and hold forward with every attack of Roy's. Um, it is okay to uh, hold back a little bit and cover some space instead. Next is a pretty basic option. If you are on a platform, you can run off and be your first side view to catch people dashing underneath the platform. This can be an alternative to just throwing out a back air while running off the platform. Um, but keep in mind that people can end up getting uh, behind you if you do this. Uh, it should it should be a like calculated uh, a calculated option and not just thrown out because it is quite punishable if they uh, either get behind you or just wait it out. And last for this video, uh, this is kind of another basic thing, but. If you are on a platform, you can space your aerials by holding back or forward as you drop through it. Uh, this can be kind of important if you want a sweet spot or sour spot specifically or spacing in general. Um, also, you can do what I think some people call a circle drop aerial uh, to get a bear, which is a better kill move uh, as well. Uh, and to do this, I think you can Google a video or search on YouTube a video about circle dropping. Uh, you should be able to find something that explains it. So that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope it helps some beginner uh, players. Uh, and uh, take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.